how beautiful it is to stand on that porch just to see you come in and be able to shake your hand, say good morning. This truly is an awesome church. You need to spread the word to your neighbors. They're missing that. They're missing that. This, this is the best place to be on Sunday morning. And I really appreciate your presence here. A little louder than you said in the back row. <laughs> All right. Would you join me in the call of worship as it's found in your bulletin this morning? Clap your hands, people of God. Shout to God with Christ and joy. Look to the heavens, brothers and sisters in Christ. Witness the power of our God. Clap your hands, people of God. Shout to God with cries of joy. And turn to hymnals number 64. Holy, holy, holy. Yes. 
he ascended that day. Focus our thoughts on the power of your salvation, that we may move beyond the mundane to contemplate the mysteries and wonders worthy of our meditations. May we be found worthy of your great gifts, and may we be clothed with your power on high. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. glorious day out there in the day. We missed everything when we are excited. Uh, now how many of you have that much enthusiasm? Huh? <laughs> All right, come. Yeah, buddy. That blesses me. You have no idea how much. <laughs> anyway, that's great. This, this day of, of picnics and this day of sporting events and this day of retail sales and, and uh, a day in the midst of remembering all those that gave their lives, that gave their time, that gave their effort to keep us free. Uh, it's an awesome thing. Uh, haven't built that much into the service this morning because Usually Memorial Day comes on the same day in the Christian year as either Ascension Day, the day when we remember Christ being ascended back to the Father, uh, or Pentecost. Uh, so often that happens, but what a, what a glorious thing to be able to remember the people that have given self, have given time, have given effort, and some have given their lives. Defend us and protect us. And to see that our way of life, that we can worship God the way we want to, goes forward. Let's see here. Welcome to announcements. Uh, be sure you read your announcement page today in the bulletin. There's some things in there you want to catch up with. I uh, want to make you aware, you are probably already aware, that uh, this will be our last month here. Well, it's coming in June, will be our last month. Uh, we will be spending a lot of time packing stuff into the truck and moving it to Mechanicsville. But I am still your full time pastor up until the end of this month. If you need me for anything, uh, you've got my telephone number. Uh, um, you probably don't have my cell phone number, but if you call the Parsons, as soon as I get back to it, I'll be in touch with you. So please keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. Next Sunday will be our last communion together. So please come out and we will celebrate that. Make sure your friends come. Think about those folks around you in the pews that aren't here today. And, and Call them up, and it doesn't matter if they receive three or four different phone calls. Call them up and, and tell them to come on back to church. Uh, I believe that's all I've got. Tina, you've got something yeah. up um, Next Saturday on the 4th of June at 11 o'clock, we're going to have the United Methodist Women invite all the women to come to the um, luncheon. It's at 11. Just come, enjoy some fellowship and some good food. Amen. I heard... I heard one, and I don't know, don't know that it's appropriate for you Methodists, but teacher, uh, teacher <coughs> said to his class, uh, uh, it's uh, Sunday that we are, and this, this, this was in Christian school, it wasn't like public school now, which can be a little bit difficult. <coughs> He said, we all have different religions. We all, in our class, we've got different faith traditions. He said, uh, next, tomorrow, tomorrow, show and tell. And he said, I want you to bring some kind of an, of an icon. And he explained to them what an icon was. It was a symbol of their faith. And he said, bring something that symbolizes your faith. So the next day they came and they started to, and uh, uh, Patrick, uh, he was Catholic. Brought a crucifix and told the class about it as crucifix. Uh, Moshe was a little Jewish boy and he brought the Star of David in to tell the class about that. Johnny was a Baptist and he brought in a casserole. Uh, that didn't work. <laughs> I'm sorry. Johnny brought a casserole. <laughs> casserole didn't. Just 
Anyhow, I think that's all the announcements I've got this morning. Is there anything else that needs to come for the group? And if not, then the ushers will come forward and receive the call. <laughs>
psalm we're reading for this morning is Psalm 97. Let us read together the psalms of The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord and burns up his adversaries round about. The Lord's lightning is in the middle of the world. The earth sees and comes. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim God's righteousness, and all the peoples behold God's glory. All worshippers of image are put to shame, who make their boast so in worthless idols. All gods bow down before the Lord. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil, preserves the lives of his faithful, and delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. Let us affirm our faith together this morning, reciting together the modern affirmation, which you'll find in the back of your hymnal on page 885. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit, as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Up for many days. 
Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. By advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. <coughs> At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in, the, in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. This is the word of God for the people of God. gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading from the 17th chapter, the 20th through the 26th verses. John 17, 20 through 26. The occasion is still the Last Supper, and Jesus says, I'm not praying only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of their word. I pray they will be one, Father, just as you and me, just as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they also will be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, so that they can be one, just as we are one. I'm in them, and you are in me, so that they will be made perfectly one. Then the world will know that you sent me, and that you have loved them just as you love me. Father, I want those you gave me to be with me where I am. Then they can see my glory which you gave me, because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, even the world didn't know you, but I've known you, and these believers know that you sent me. I've made your name known to them, and will continue to make it known, so that your love for me will be in them, and I myself will be in them. Would you pray with me? Gracious, loving God, may the words that I speak this morning, and the thoughts we think, and the feelings that we experience in this moment, may they all be acceptable in your sight. May they continue to teach us of your great love for us, and may they inspire us, Lord, to want to live for you. In Christ we pray. Amen. What happened? Here, the 
the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples before his crucifixion, he prays for unity. Let me go back and read a few verses once again. I am not praying only for them. He's talking to God about his disciples there at that place in that time. I'm not praying only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of their word. I pray they will be one, Father, just as you and just as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they also will be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. So oh. what is essential? The gospel seems to have become irrelevant in so much of today's world because of variants, doctrines, practices. If you ever heard anybody express why in the world would I want to be Christian, those people you don't have any idea what they're talking about. They're disagreeing all the time. There's aggravation between them. The groups are having all sorts of problems. They're splitting up one from the other, so on and so forth. Is it any wonder that people in the world are turning their backs on the church? We just can't seem to get it together. We can't pull together. There's doctrine this and doctrine that, and the two fight against each other, and, and we see this ever and ever and over again. What is essential? What are the things that we must believe in? I would submit to you the first, the first most personal, most most basic thing that we have got to remember no matter what it is we face in this world. And I mentioned it to you a few weeks ago, we need to know and understand that God is good all the time. Doesn't matter what we face in this world, doesn't matter what difficulties we run into, we have to have that basic belief. And you remember I shared with you that text become so meaningful to me. At Easter time when John and Peter ran to the tomb and they saw that Jesus wasn't there, and it said they believed. They didn't understand, but they believed. How important that is for us. How essential that is for us. To know that there is a God in the world and who is good all the time. And he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross and be raised up again. That we might all have salvation. We might not have to face an eternity in hell without God. That we can spend all of God's, all of our eternity, all of all of forever in the presence of a living, loving God. How important that is. Second, I would say to you that we need to understand and we need to know and we need to believe in the two basic commandments that Jesus gave us. They weren't brand new with him. They've been around since before in the Old Testament. You see the Shema. That's the word for the, for the first most important commandment that Jesus told his disciples about. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And the second he said was like it. You must love your neighbors as yourself. These are essential. He also said there's a new commandment that I give you. This was, this was something new. Love one another as I have loved you. And we know what he did. We know that he sacrificed himself on the cross. Well, all he went through, if any of you saw that movie, The Passion of Christ, you know and understand that it wasn't all sweetness and light and bird singing and everything else. He went through pain and he went through hell and he went through everything else that was horrible because he loved us. Because he loves us. That's the important piece of that. Don't just believe in the event. Yeah, I believe in the I believe he died and was raised up again. Do you believe he did it for you? And do you believe he did it because he loves you? That's what's essential. Teachings of Jesus himself. The other things that we must be laid with, along with God is good, along with the two most important commandments, along with the new commandment, believing in the teachings of Jesus himself. Let me share some of those with you from the Sermon on the Mount. You must keep the commandments. You must keep the commands. Not for the sake of the commandments themselves, not because it's something that's written down in the law, but keep those commandments because God loves you. Because you need to love God back. It's not about the glory to you, but it's about the glory to God. Let others see your love. 
let others see what you do. And again, it's not because of, of, of building yourself up, of loading yourself up. Jesus also taught against that. But, but it's so that others can see the good things that you do and how happy you are and satisfied you are because you follow Christ's way. Awesome piece of it. What else is important? To love your enemies. That was another teaching. And that's a hard thing to do. Somebody steps on your toe, you want to step back. You want to step back on his toe. Somebody does you wrong, you want to do wrong back to him. That's the first, often the first kind of a, of a, a response we have in our lives and our hearts. And Jesus, don't do that. Somebody does you bad, you do them good. What he says, it's like burning hot coals, put one on their head. Hmm. Love your enemies. Seek the kingdom of God and not wealth. You can't serve God and mammon. Mammon being that other word for, for wealth. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things that you need will be added unto you. That's a promise. There's nowhere in this book that God calls on you to do something that he doesn't make you a promise. And that's what he said. In that sermon on the mount that day, he said to the people, don't look to wealth. Don't invest your time. Don't make that the most important thing in your life. That's kind of rough. We want to be secure. We want to be safe. We don't want to have to rely on others. And that's true. But where does it stop? You want so much, and you want so much more. And if you want more of that, then you want so much more. There's a certain illustration that I had one time in the book, and the book is gone, and I can't remember it now, but it talked about it. 10 or 12 of the most wealthiest people in the world, and they'd all gotten together at one point for a sort of a meeting together. And this was back, I would say, probably during the Second World War, during that time. And it mentioned every one of those. Uh, people that you would remember, if, if I could remember their names. Industrial giants, uh, people that have that had made millions of dollars, multi-millions of dollars. And then it went back through and listed all of them. And every single one of them died penniless and broke. Powerful people. Some of them ended up in jail. Some of them ended up committing suicide because they had put their, their, their trust, they had put their work, they had put their effort in the wrong place. And instead of building up their treasures in heaven, they wanted to lighten their pockets. So, seek first the kingdom of God. And God will give you what you need. Don't judge others. Don't judge others. What did he say? Don't worry about the splinter in somebody else's eye if you've got a log in your own. It's kind of hard. It's, a, it's, it's of human nature to want to put ourselves up, sometimes by bringing others down. It's a difficult thing. Sometimes that's just what our, what our reaction wants to be. But, but he said, don't, don't, uh, don't judge others. Worry about yourself first. Worry about the things that you do in your life that are wrong. Worry about those things first. That other person will take care of God will take care of that. What did he say? Don't. He said, don't. The weeds and the weed are planted together there. We're all coming up together in this earth. And they wanted to separate out and pull the weed. He said, no, don't do that. He said, the time is coming when I'll do that. There's a time coming when God will separate the weeds from the wheat. That's not our job. Our job is to love everybody, regardless. And that's a hard thing sometimes to do. What did he say? Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. If you put God at the center of your life and you can do that, you can do that by thanking God for everything he's done for you. All the blessings that you have, put God at the center of that. You thank God for the things you have and you ask God for what you need. And, and knowing and understanding that you rely on God for what you need and knowing also that God knows what you need better than you do. And trust him to provide for you. He said the entrance requirement for into the kingdom of heaven is doing the will of God. Doing the will of God. 
So if there are principles that we are to believe and to live by, what are the principles that are dividing us? What are the principles, what are the things that are dividing us apart? And I would suggest that there, there are three primary notions that are causing division in the church of today. You see it on the news. You see it not just in the church, but in society. You see these things that are breaking us up and splitting us apart. One of them is homosexuality. The second one is abortion. And the third one I would suggest to you is rights and our concern for our rights. If you search the Gospels, you'll see that Jesus never said a word about any one of those. As to the first, in the Old Testament there are laws. There are laws against men with men and women with women. There are all kinds of laws. And Jesus said, if you're going to live by a law, you need to live by all of the laws. And there's a lot of people who will point to this one, they'll point to that one, they'll point and say, this is bad, you can't do this. Thing. And not ignoring that whole body of laws that often we're guilty of breaking this one or that one or whatever. It's not our place to judge somebody else for what they're doing. In Galatians 3.26, it says, All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. That means Gentile. That was the word they used for Greeks, not just those who lived in Greece, but all Gentiles. Neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's the way we should see each other. We are all one, we all have one emotion, we all have one, we all have one purpose in this world. And, and Jesus has shared that with us. As to the second, people in the Old Testament and New Testament times didn't know about genes and chromosomes. Certainly they knew where babies come from, but had no understanding of what fetal development was all about. There was an understanding that God was the source and the giver of life. And as many point to the poetry of the 139th Psalm as if it was a scientific truth. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. That's in there. That's in the book. That's in the book of Psalms. But also in there, just two verses later, it says, but, and, and seldom is referred to, my bones weren't hidden from you when I was being woven together in the deep parts of the earth. What we have in the book of Psalms is a book of poetry. It's a book that teaches us, it's a book that gives us feelings about things. That's, that's what Psalms did. It wasn't a scientific truth. Problems. As to the third thing, the third problem that is causing division in our churches as well as our society is the topic of individual rights. It's hard to prove a negative, but the fact remains. The only rights that Jesus ever mentions in his parable about the land where paying its hired hands. And you remember the story, I'm sure. There were people that went out with the, with the landlord early in the morning. There were people that went out mid-morning. There were people that went out at noon. There were people that went out later in the day. And they were all paid the same amount. And when they were questioned about it, the, the landowner said, is it not my money? Is it not, don't I have the right to do with it as I choose? But that right is about God. It's not about human individuals. There is nothing, nothing in the Gospels. And I don't think you'll find anything anywhere in the Bible about our individual rights. Well, we have rights. You've heard me talk about it before. We've got the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the reason that we have that is because I'm commanded to care about you. And you're commanded to care about me. And we're all commanded to care about each other. That's where we have rights. That's why we've got, I'd call it the privileges that we have of living on this earth. And, and, and those rights that we claim we have only because God commanded us to look after each other. Hard thing 
the swamp. We like to think we have rights. It's in our constitution that we have rights. It calls the calls our rights inalienable, and it calls says that that, that it is self-evident. And that's because there is no evidence in the black book that we've got those rights. I'm not talking against our Constitution now. I said we've got rights, but we've got them because God has commanded me and you and all of us to look out for each other. So, Rather than being concerned with our rights, he says much more about our responsibilities to each other. So we've got those three things. Those three things, and there's probably some more that, that divide us. All three are hot button issues, certainly in today's society. We look on the news and we see those over and over again. All of us will have our opinions of each. I'm not going to stand here and tell you what to believe. Mm -hmm. That's the way cults get started. It's when there are individuals, many of the preachers, Many of them who tell you that you have to believe the way that I believe. You have to think the way that I think. I won't do that. You've got to read the book. You've got to look. You've got to listen. And I would, I would advise you to be careful about who you listen to. What does that individual have to gain by you following what he says or she says? Be careful of that. So, read. Search the scriptures. And have a caution to who you're listening to and who you're believing. And don't let doctrine divide you. You need to understand we are all called to a purpose. That purpose, Jesus said, was to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything to obey everything that I have commanded you. That is what we're, it's not just the guys in the robes, not just the guys in the albums, if you will. We're not the only ones that do that. That's the job of all of us, to share with one another how important it is to live a godly life. You see things going on, you understand, you hear, and it's tough. I know, I was on that side of the chancel rail for 15 years before I got back here. It's hard to stand up for the things that you believe in. You just don't want to cause any trouble. I've been there, I know, and I understand. But that's what our responsibility is, is to be able to stand up and to speak up and to do what God's will is and to encourage other people to do the same. And that's how the kingdom of God grows. Go into the whole world and proclaim the good news to every creature. Jesus prepared us with scripture, tradition, and reason. After he proclaimed to us what we were supposed to do, he prepared us by giving us scripture, by giving us the traditions of the teachings of the church, by giving us the experiences that we have with God himself, and by giving us brains that we can reason for ourselves what's right and what's wrong. After Jesus proclaimed that and he prepared us by giving us the scripture, the tradition, the experience, and the reason, then you see Jesus prayed for us. That they, we would be unified. And Jesus promised us that he would be with us always to the end of the age. Let us be committed to not let divisions overcome our unity. Amen. Amen. Would you turn your hymnals to our closing hymn, please? Number 62, All Creatures of Our God. <laughs>
Let us engage our charge and blessing responsibly. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Christ, Christ ascended to show us the way. Trust the Spirit's power. Christ ascended to close us with power. Go as witnesses of the risen Lord. Christ ascended to bring us eternal life. Go in peace.